chapter 15 the Christians begin all acts and thinking by using Al-Kalim the All tablet 21 Yeshua returns to Egypt 19 times 1 equals 19 Lo Yeshua was convinced that it would no longer be safe for him to remain in Damascus he went to Nisibis from that city, he, the mystic Gaspar and his people, travelled into Syria. As he travelled, he carried the Shoburah's staff, which they called Azza. Travelling by shadow hour, he slept on the ground with his head on a rock, which was later found to be the same thing that he did when he arrived in Egypt. The time when Yashua was to arrive there in Egypt, the ruler was being very cruel to the people. Yashua put himself out to preach and tried to save the ruler to change him. When Yeshua reached near the neighborhoods, Gaspar sent his people into the city to tell them and proclaim that Yeshua was outside the city, and he was a prophet, a healer, and a teacher. Amongst them was one called Jacob, who offered along with Thomas to warn them. People abused them and said unpleasant things about Yeshua and his wife. These people were ultimately produced before the ruler, and he had their hands and feet cut off. Shaman. One of the ministers suggested that Yeshua be asked to come and establish his claim, for he was nothing but a magician and he was bound to fall. Yeshua exclaimed, I have had many people call me a magician. Some say they know this and that about me, but my works are my real miracle. Don't let them use their friendship with you to mislead you. Yashua then placed a cup of hands and feet next to their bodies and passed his hands over them and said, By the order of Elian Elianel, and they became whole again. During Yashua's time, Mary Magdalene was with him, and while travelling, he wore a long jalabiya, robe and an imma, turban, and carried a shoba staff. He spent most of his time walking by foot, always saying that he did not want to put a burden on any other beast. Yeshua journeyed to the land of Mashak, where the tomb of Shem, son of Noah, was located. There he met other brothers of the Essenes. At this point, Yeshua took an oath of silence, setting a seal upon his lips, and then set out on his journey further. He left this place because the ruler of Nisaban was such a cunning man, and he had his people try to kill Yeshua again. In those days, there were three towns with the name of Nisaban, or Nisibis, one between Mosul and Syria, the second on the banks of the Euphrates, and the third near Halab in Syria. Travelling back up and over to Lebanon, he continued his journey finally to Egypt, where he would meet his friend Mesca. In all his journeys, these are the things that Yashua truly tries to teach the people. Tablet 22, The Seven Tests, 19 times 4 equals 76. Lo, finally in Egypt, he was received as a student. Yashua was preparing himself for his seven tests to receive the highest degree any man would ever receive. He said, I will gain the highest heights of wisdom that man has ever gained, the 720 degrees, 360 degrees of the physical, and 360 degrees of the spiritual. What any man has suffered I will meet, that I may know how to comfort those in need. His first test was sincerity. For many days, he remained alone in a room in which the light was faint and mellow like the light of the early dawn. He read the sacred text and studied the hieroglyphics. The priest entered and told him that he was to save his life, for the other priests were jealous and tried to plot with him to deceive the priests. But Yashua turned him away, telling him that he had only bought him a lesson in deceit. Thus Yashua passed the first test and was given the scroll of sincerity. The second test was justice. Again, he was put in a chamber for many daylight hours and shadow hours. Two men came to him in priest's attire, each carrying a flickering lamp. They claimed that they came to help him and that they too had once been imprisoned in the same room and they offered him escape. They also claimed that the priests were in actuality criminals planning to sacrifice him. Yeshua told them that no man judged for him and asked them to leave. Thus he earned a second degree of justice. The third test was faith, it was indeed a hard test. The Hall of Fame was a chamber rich in furnishing and lit up with gold and silver lamps. Impressed with his surroundings, notwithstanding the shelves of books by the masterminds, he became absorbed in deepest thought, until a priest came to him declaring, Behold the flurry of this place, my brother, you are highly blessed. He continued, Few men have reached high fame. Why seek for further misting lights within these dens? Go forth and walk with men, they will honour you. 
These weird initiations may be myths and your messiah hopes, but base illusions are the hour. For 40 days, the higher self wrestled with the lower self, and then faith rose triumphant. Yeshua said, the wealth and honor and the fame of earth are but the baubles of an hour. Yea, what man does with his selfish will make no marking on the credit side of life. Thus, he passed the third test, faith. The degree of philanthropy was the fourth test. In the Hall of Mirth, which was also richly furnished and equipped with everything a carnal heart could wish for, maids in gay attire served men and women who were wild with joy. Yeshua simply watched in silence. Three times during the festivities, hungry and destitute visitors knocked at the door of the hall, a man, a woman and a child, but they were driven away each time. Unable to seek his pleasure at the expense of the unfortunate visitors, Yeshua set out after them. Why? Because they were part of them all, which is a part of one great human heart. The fourth test philanthropies was passed. The fifth test, heroism, was a test of will and faith over material binds. Yeshua's guides placed him in chains in the midst of a den of hungry beasts, unclean beasts, unclean birds and creeping things. The wild beasts howled, the birds screamed and the reptiles hissed. Yeshua asked himself, why do I sit to be bound with chains? None has the power to bind a human soul. Thus strengthened, he rose, and what he thought were chains were merely worthless cords, rags parted at his touch. Yeshua said, if man will stand erect and use the power of will, his chains will fall like worthless rags. For will and faith are stronger than the strongest chains that man has ever made. The darkness that binds me is but the absence of light, and the light is but the breath of Elian Elianel, vibrating in the rhythm of rapid thought. And with the will of might, he stirred up the elders, and their vibrations reached the plane of light. And there was light, and the birds, beasts, and creeping things were not. Again, Yeshua appeared before the high priest and received another degree, heroism. The sixth test was of love divine. It is said that few ever get to the sixth test. In the Hall of Harmony, a room filled with musical instruments, among which was a harpsichord, Yeshua sat in thought mood inspecting it. A maid of enchanting beauty entered and made her way to the harpsichord. She played and sang songs of Israel. Yeshua was entranced by her beauty. After she left, he thought of no other but her. A few days later she returned. This time she spoke and laid her hand on his head. He forgot his work, so thrilled was he by her touch. Again, his ego longed for her. He could not eat or sleep. Then he said, I have conquered every foe that I have met and shall not be conquered by his carnal love. His higher ego found himself again. He said, I will be victor over carnal love. The maiden once again returned, but now this time to be spurned by a now wiser student of al qadir He was now a private student being taught the mysteries of Egypt. To pass the seventh test required work in the chamber of the dead to learn the ancient methods of preserving the dead. He gave comfort to those who mourned the passing of their loved ones and offered them help through the strengthening words. Yet, despite his age and wisdom, he still had to learn the most important lesson of all. A girl of tender age followed her grieving mother into the chamber behind the body of another child. As the courier neared the door, the child observed the wounded bird in sore distress, a hunter's dart in its breast. She left her position to help the bird, after which she returned. Yeshua, amazed, asked the child of her action. She said, a lifeless body needs no help. I can help where there is life. She had also been taught that grief and hopes and fears are reflexes from the lower self and that all emotions are prayers that arise from human loves, hopes and fears, that perfect bliss cannot be ours until we have conquered these. Yeshua said, for days, months and years I have sought to learn this high truth that man could learn on earth and the child has told me in one short breath. Yeshua passed the seventh test. After Yeshua completed his seven schools, he stood before the high priest to receive his scroll of a higher degree. Thus he was told, you are the spirit of Elian Elianel, no man can do more. The Elian Elianel will confirm your title and decree. A dove descended, and a voice shook the temple, saying, This is my Ruah Shilanu. Yeshua at this point was 120 years old. When Yeshua was in Egypt, he spoke of the events that took place in his life. Thus they became part of Egyptian history. 
the Egyptians called Yeshua Iusis and Iasis and Horus and Heru. In Greek, he was called Hurios, simply son. The recorded dates of when he was in Egypt vary according to the calendar that is being used. Because of this, it is hard for historians to accurately state the exact time that Yeshua was in Egypt. One historian may find artifacts that were dated according to the Coptic Egyptian calendar, whereas another historian will base his findings on Judaic or the Gregorian calendar. Dates from one calendar to the next vary greatly. His beloved wife died at age 110, being younger than him by 10 years, she passed 10 years before him. Their surviving four children moved southward up the Nile to live amongst their own. In time, their own tribe became known as the Bega. Tablet 23, the death of Yeshua, 19 times 2 equals 38. Lo, the book called Revelation records thus, in the 11th degree, the 8th verse, their bodies will be discarded in the marketplaces of the great city, which is being called the spiritual Sodom in Egypt. The place in which the Kuros of these two were crucified, this crucifixion, at age 120 was the ascension of Yeshua, to be met in the skies with a craft, to where he is alive to this very day, awaiting his return. The great pyramid at Giza, Egypt, is a sepulchre, which is a place in Mount of the Dead. It is written that Yeshua died on a cross. The pyramid is the cross that represents the astronomical symbol, power, symbol of the planet Earth. It is one in line of three, forming the Orion constellation. Orion for Osiris, and the other Sirius for Isis, and the other third slightly offline and smaller for Horus, bringing the heaven down upon the Earth. And Yeshua made this statement, as Horus the sun, in my father's house there are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. Speaking of all the astrological constellations, Yeshua went to Egypt for the ritual of the opening of the mouth and the reinstillment of life eternal. The four triangles of the pyramid form a crosswind looked at when viewing the pyramid from a position above it. When the Romans and Jews and other Greeks teach that they put Yeshua, a son of Mary, to death upon a cross, in actuality they meant he died on top of a pyramid. What happened to the body of Yeshua is confused with the body of Cleophas, and the same thing that happens to the bodies of all the Phoenician Egyptian pharaohs before. The bodies of all the Phoenician pharaohs were mummified, including the body of this deprived pharaoh called Jesus Justus, who is Isa Pandera Cleophas. After the mummification process, the body of Yeshua, the false Hamashiach, of 2000 years ago, the son of Cleopatra, his body was transferred to India and entombed where it is laid to rest in Kishma. The image of the beast has been spread worldwide as the image and likeness of Yeshua. This plot was to have all those who did not see him worshipping the image of the beast and giving their lives to it. Yeshua, under the name Sananda or Tammuz, is in the crystal city in the heavenly skies, leaving this statement. And he said to them, You are Cato beneath, and I am from Anu above. You are of this cosmos world, I am not of this cosmos world. He left them with the promise that he would send another Paracletos, comforter like himself, another holy person or holy soul, who would not speak of himself, but only that which he hears would he speak. He would have a little book, Al Quran, which would be sweet in the mouth and bitter in the belly. This comforter or praise one would glorify Yeshua's holy name, which is Ruach Soul of Anu. This prophesied comforter was none other than Mustafa Muhammad al Amin, commonly called the Prophet Muhammad, born 570 AD in Arabia. And after Muhammad, who is called in River Mahmud, would come Muhammad Ahmed al Mahdi. And after al Mahdi, would come al Mujadid, Isa al Hadi al Mahdi. And after al Mujadid, would again come al Messiah, called Hamashiach and the Messiah. Tablet 24, the description of Yeshua, 19 times 4 equals 76. Lo, yet if anyone wants to know what Yeshua really looked like, the great prophet Daniel recorded it this way. In Daniel, the 7th degree verse 9 gives a description of Yeshua. While I was looking, thrones were put in place. One who has been living forever sat down on one of the thrones. His clothes were white as snow, and his hair was like pure wool. His throne, mounted on fiery wheels, was blazing with fire. This is recorded and believed to be a description of the Ancient of Days, known to be Melchizedek, yet believed to be Yeshua. 
but the description remains. This being had not an ether woolly or kingly hair texture, but the Greeks are responsible for this great deception. They altered words from their places as they translated from the Aramaic to the Greek, which gave you your Miss English translation. Read. In the book of Revelation, the first degree verses 14 through 15, you can see how the Greeks mistranslated the description of Yeshua. It reads, His head and his hairs were white like wool. This is the point of the deception. The implication here is that there was a white glow that was around his head, and his hair was like white wool. However, wool coming from the sheep can also be brown and black. Also, Revelation's story was taken from Daniel's story, for Revelation was revealed in 96 AD, and Daniel's was revealed in 5 536 BCE, many thousands of years before, and Daniels clearly states, and his hair was like pure wool, back to Revelation, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burnt in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Without the intentional alteration of the texture of his hair, the book of Daniel makes it plain that he had woolly hair. The rest of Revelation describes the person that has red eyes, not the pupil, but the sclera, common in the Warpian people only. Again it states that his feet were like fine brass, that would be polished brass. Brass is a combination of 50% copper, which is reddish brown in colour, and zinc, a dullish grey. This combination would produce a brownish colour, but Revelation says this same brass feet had the appearance of being burnt. That would mean that it was not a brass colour any longer, but brass after it had been burnt. This would produce a very dark hue. At the same point, we have three clear descriptions of Yeshua. He had woolly hair, the sclera of his eyes were red, and his feet, which is attached to the rest of his body, is burnt to a dark complexion. And they proceed to describe his voice as having the sound of many waters, which again describes a very common Warpian characteristic, a raspy voice. He stood six feet in height. He had a very medium build, but often appeared very thin from strict fasting. He grew a full beard. As he is described in his eyes book which reads, He hath no form, no comeliness, and we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He was tall, dark, but not handsome. This is a description of Yeshua HaMashiach of 2000 years ago. The Return of Yeshua and he showed me water of a river of the water of life, glittering as crystal coming out of the sea of Anu, he who is above the heavenly one, of El Elo and Tammuz the Lamb. And in the middle of what looked like a market street of it, and on both sides of the river, was a tree of life, which gave twelve fruits every month, and the leaves of the tree were to heal all nations. And all who were cursed did not exist any more, but the seat of Anu, he who is above the heavenly one, and Tammuz the lamb in it, and the servants who serve him. They will see his face, and his name is in their foreheads, and there won't be any shadow hours there, and no need of light from a lamp, nor any light of the sun, because of the illumination to them, and they will rule forever and ever. And he said to me, that these words are faithful, and are facts beyond any doubt. And the Adonai, the Theos of the souls of the newsbearers, sent his Anunakai, those who Anu sent from heaven to key earth, to teach his servants that which must come about soon. This is it, I'm coming soon. Blessed is he who guards the words of his prophecy in this volume. And I, the newsbearer John, son of Zebedee, saw and heard these things, and after I had heard and seen, I fell down to prostrate in front of the feet of the Anunakai who was the one who showed me all this. And he said to me, Don't do that, because I am a servant just like you, and like your brothers the newsbearers, and those who guard the words prophesied in this scroll. So prostration is for Anu, he who is above the heavenly one only. And he said to me, Don't seal the words to the prophecies in this scroll, because the time is near. As for him who is in ignorance, so leave him in ignorance. Also he who is defiled, so let him be defiled. And he who is righteous, then let him be righteous also. And the holy, so let him be holy also. Here I come, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me. In order to reward everyone, according to all they have done. I am the first letter and the last letter, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, so that there may exist authority 
over the tree of life and may enter into the city by way of its doors and outside are dogs, sorcerers, fornicators and killers and those who serve idols and everyone who loves to do nothing but lie. I, Messiah Yeshua, have sent my Anunnaki, those who Anu sent from heaven to key earth, to testify to you all these incidents in the congregation. I am the descendant and of the same race as the beloved and the lamp and the early star. And the soul of the bride says, Come, and let them that hear say, Come, and those who are thirsty, so let them come, and as for him who wants, so let him take of the water of life freely. For surely I bear witness to all who hear the words of this prophecy in this scroll. If anyone adds to these things, so Anu, he who is above the heavenly one, will add to him the plagues of the things written in this scroll. And if anyone takes away from the words of the scroll of this prophecy, Anu, he who is above the heavenly one, will drop his share from the scroll of life, and from the holy city, and from what is written in this scroll. The witness says this, Yes, surely I am coming soon, Ammon. Come on, Messiah Yeshua. The grace of our Rabbi, the Messiah Yeshua, be with you all. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, but when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Adonai have promised them that love him. This is how it was recorded, and this is how it will be.